Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Reed. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist, and I practice at Reproductive Science Center in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, so on the day of your embryo transfer, you'll go to your clinic. Um, the most uncomfortable thing for most patients is they'd have to come with a super full bladder. Um, we're very respectful of that. So the sonographer gets you into a room really quickly, takes a look, makes sure we've got things where we need them to be. And then a doctor will come into the room and explain the whole process and do the actual transfer. Usually an embryologist is also involved in the, the transfer as well. Um, right after the transfer, we'll let you get up and go empty your bladder. Um, this is something that makes everybody super nervous. They're always afraid the embryo is gonna fall out of them and it won't. Um, we actually have really good data that shows that getting up right after the transfer, emptying your bladder is actually helpful. Uh, full bladder can lead to some cramping and contractions and we want everything to stay nice and quiet right after that transfer. So after embryo transfer, I tell my patients to go on what I call couch potato mode. It doesn't have to be bed rest. I tell them they can move around, um, continue doing sort of household tasks, but I like them to be mostly sitting down or laying down for the rest of the day. The reason is we know that first 24 hours is super important for implantation, and we certainly want to give patients their absolute best chance. But the next day after the transfer, most patients can go back to fairly normal life. So a lot of our patients are exercising before coming into this fertility journey. And what I usually do is talk to patients on an individual basis about what their particular exercise routine is. There are some things that are great to continue the whole time and other things we'd ask you to back off on. I usually tell patients that I wanna avoid anything that's super high impact or super high intensity between the embryo transfer and that first pregnancy ultrasound. But lower impact things like walking, yoga, swimming, biking, a lot of those things can actually be helpful because it increases blood supply, blood flow. Um, I'm not worried about the embryo falling out. I'm more worried about um, your body being able to give your uterus the blood flow and the oxygen that it needs to help support healthy implantation. Hmm, the home pregnancy test. Um, we all feel slightly different about this. The test I care most about is the blood test you come into our office for. We all have patients who've had false negative tests and wanted to stop medication early and they come in and do the blood test and it's positive. So the most accurate test is always gonna be the one you do in the office. That being said, if it's gonna help you feel relaxed, if it's gonna take some of the pressure off, I totally understand why people may wanna test at home. I just ask that they not uh, make any decisions about changing their plans or their treatment until they talk to us. When to start? Oh, that's hard to say. Um, I really think nine, 10 days post-transfer is probably the best time to be checking, um, but I have patients who start peaking early. Um, and again, if it relieves stress for you, great. If it makes things more stressful, stay away.